Welcome to Electron Line. There's nothing like a good example to show us how to really do this correctly, how to use this correctly. What we're saying here is we're trying to find the current state matrix based upon the previous state matrix and then multiply the A matrix by this to get into the right format and also the control variable matrix uh, multiplied times the B matrix. What we're trying to do here is get the position and the velocity from the previous state and convert that to the position and velocity of the current state. Our example is going to be a simple 1D example. We're only moving in the Y direction. The initial position in the Y direction is 50 meters. The initial velocity in the Y direction is 5 meters per second. And I probably should write this as V sub Y sub naught and A sub Y sub naught. The initial velocity in the Y direction is 5 meters per second. The initial acceleration in the Y direction is 2 meters per second squared. Both of those are positive upward. And the delta T interval is 1 second. We're assuming that the acceleration is not going to change. It's going to remain at 2 meters per second square. The velocity, of course, will change as we continue through these uh, steps. First, uh, let's look at the matrix again. So we have the current state matrix is equal to the A matrix multiplied times the previous state plus the B matrix multiplied times the control matrix. This has the control variables. In this case, there's only one variable, the acceleration in the y direction. We're going to assume that the noise at this point is zero to make it simple. So we have when we multiply these two together, we get this vector. When we multiply these two together, we get that vector. Add them together. This is the vector, or I should say, this is the matrix that then tells us what the current, uh, the current state is relative to the previous state. When time is equal to zero, our state matrix will look as follows. We have the position in the y direction, and we have the velocity in the y direction, so we Come over here, position is 50 meters, velocity is 5 meters, so the state matrix will look like this, 50 and 5. Now, after one time interval, time now equals 1. So we come up here and we say the new state matrix, x sub k, is going to be equal to the previous position, which is 50, the velocity multiplied times the time interval, so plus 5 times 1, we'll just use parentheses, plus 1 half times acceleration, which is 2, times the delta t quantity squared. So that would be 1 squared. For the velocity, we have the previous velocity, which is 5, and the change in velocity due to the acceleration, the acceleration is 2, delta t is 1. This gives us the new state matrix. Let's go ahead and add this together. This is 5 plus 5 is 55. This is 1, that's 56 for the position. And for the velocity, we have 5 plus 2, which is 7. So there's our next state matrix. The position and velocity are now 56 meters and 7 meters per second. Now when time is equal to 2, the new matrix will look as follows. We start with the initial or the previous position, which is 56, plus the previous velocity, which is now 7, times the delta t, which is 1, plus 1 half, the acceleration, times delta t quantity squared. Velocity, we have the previous velocity, which is 7, plus the acceleration, which is 2, times delta t, which is 1. Our new position, 56 plus 7 is 63, plus 1 is 64. Our new velocity, 7 plus 2, which is 9. Okay, next step. Time is equal to 3. X sub k, one time interval later, the new position, or the previous position, was 64, plus the velocity previously, it's 9, multiplied times the delta t, plus 1 half, acceleration times delta t squared. And here we have our previous velocity, which is now 9, plus the acceleration times delta t. And our new state matrix now becomes 64 plus 9, that's 73, plus 1 is 74. The velocity is 9 plus 2, which is now 11. Let's do it one more time. What happens when time is equal to 4? The new state matrix is equal to take the previous position, which is 74, plus the velocity times delta t. The velocity in the previous uh, state was 11 times delta t is 1 plus 1 half times
times acceleration times delta t squared. The previous velocity, 11 plus the acceleration times delta t. And this now becomes 74 plus 11, that's 85, plus 1, that's 86, and 11 plus 2, 13. Meaning after 1, 2, 3, 4 intervals, our state matrix now is a position of 86 and a velocity of 13. And that's how we continue. What's really interesting is if we apply the equation kinematics, where we can say that y is equal to y sub naught plus v sub naught in the y direction times time, plus one half the acceleration times time squared, and we find out what this is equal to when time is equal to four, the initial position of 50 plus the initial velocity of five times elapsed time plus one half times acceleration times the elapsed time squared, we should get the exact same uh, position as that. Let's see if that's equal to, is that correct? 50 plus 20, that's 70. This is 16 plus 16, 70 plus 16 is indeed 86, and that would be, of course, meters. Velocity-wise, velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus acceleration times time. Calculating the velocity when time is equal to 4 is equal to the initial velocity, oh, not position, but velocity, we start at 5 meters per second, plus the acceleration times the time, which is 4, that's 8 plus 5, which is 13 meters per second, and notice we do get the exact correct position and the exact correct velocity using the equation kinematics, just like we did using the state matrices. That's how you can see that we can track an object for position and velocity using the state matrices. We'll show you later how to also account for noise factors in the process, but at this point we just want to go cleanly so you can see how those equations and those matrices actually work and what they look like. At this point, you may wonder, why even bother with Kalman filtering? Why can't I just simply use the equation of kinematics? Well, there's more to it than meets the eye. First of all, we will get to the point where we have to include noise factors in the estimation process and in the Kalman filtering process. We have noise factors in, the, in our ability to run through the process. We have noise factors in when we observe the, the thing that we're tracking, if we're tracking a satellite or a plane, the data that we get back are not absolute correct values. They will vary. There will be a certain amount of variation in the numbers that we get back. And the Kalman filter will put the correct balance between how much we trust the observational information that we get and how much we trust the predicted values that we get because there will be a, a noise factor in there where the numbers we get here will not be equal to the numbers we actually should be getting if we had a perfect model. That's what Kalman filtering is for. It, it reduces the effect of the uncertainty and the errors in the observations and the uncertainty and the errors in the actual process. And the Kalman filter will balance that weight out in such a way that it puts more importance in one or the other depending upon which is, can be more relied upon and the Kalman filtering process figures that out and helps us then zero in on the closest potential position and velocity that we can have for the observation, that we, for the ob observed item that we're tracking, like a plane or a satellite or something like that. And it's the Kalman filtering process that minimizes our error that allows us to zero in to very close of its actual position and velocity. That's what this is all about. So don't get alarmed saying, why do I even bother? because it looks like I get the very same results with these equations, but it's not that simple. That's what we need Kalman filtering for. Now we go on to the next step of our Kalman filter. So if you're still interested, stay tuned and we'll continue with this process until we got all the way through every step of the way, every matrix fully understood. And now we can apply this into a program so we can actually calculate the actual position and the velocity and acceleration and so forth of things that we're tracking. And that's how it's done in Kalman filtering.